Your name always was Slushy? What was your original DJ name? Was it always Slushy when you were young? It was uh, DJ Swoon. What the fuck is that? It just, you know, like Swoon, like, uh, uh, pass out. Uh. Uh. It, was like, it was like my high school <laughs> DJ name. And thank the Lord, SoundCloud removed my account. Because uh, then I renamed it. Well, I was originally Slushy. <laughs> well, no, no, Sushi first. And, uh, and and I would say it. I would say like I misspeak sometimes. Slushy's gangster though. I fuck with that. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Who the fuck don't like slushies, man? I had a slushy the other day, dude. What's your favorite? Cherry. The one, the McDonald ones is yeah. the bangers. Especially at three in the morning. There's nothing to order. <sighs> Have you had the grimace shake yet? Ugh. No. What's, <laughs> what the fuck is that slushy? What is that? So Come there, on. there's there. Uh, it's it's. <laughs> In McDonald's lore, it is Grimace's birthday, so they they gave him his own meal and shake. Come on, man. <laughs> Isn't the shtick that people are getting killed by it or something like that? <laughs> Isn't that the deal? That's what people are uploading. <laughs> the Grimace, the Grimace shake. Uh, oh, I, my God, it's a man. Thing. <laughs> so it's like it's sold out everywhere in L.A. right now. So I, I tried to like Uber Eats it, and the Grimace shake is just always, it's the Grimace meal. It's his birthday, man. Come on. Shout, shout out to Snoop Dogg, man. I know that's like your boy. What, what you got over? You got his cereal. You get, to have, you get to actually eat his cereal during the podcast? Dude, I'm so stoked because. Why is it the same color of your hair? It's just like so weird. He's that much of a fan. It's like too much like connections going on. Ooh. You know, wheels you got, within you, wheels. You got past life, the connection. Now you got the cereal connection. The wow. fruity hoops with marshmallows. They got marshmallows in that shit. I Dude. mean, you think DJ Marshmallow get pissed off? I mean, <laughs> all right, we're good. So yeah, we're actually filming uh, Slushy. Yo, he actually gonna try to fuck you. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm down. And then the colors of the cereal is the same colors of all your hair colors. Yeah, it's like it's a. Uh, it's a little it, rainbow right there. There you go. Wait, hold up. Oh, it's like every color. Hey. You, how often you change your hair color? I actually just redyed my hair like two weeks ago. Um, I, I, well, I've just been doing pink. I, I've been like uh, re reapplying whenever it gets too bright. So my mom <laughs> really is a cosmetologist. No so way. when she was going through through school, I like kind of inadvertently learned all. Oh, so you like, so, oh you have the science look. So you ain't burning your scalp and all that stuff. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this guy is enjoying the the you know, this accident. Fucking no! Snoop See? cereal. Look at that. Is it cool to have that whack ass almond breeze milk? That fucking John brought here. <laughs> white people milk. <laughs> Oh, Where the black people milk? At? I'm only half white, so, oh, okay. so I only half hate it. <laughs> Yo, what's up, hood kid? How are you? Is it me or you sound like an alien? Is it me? Does he sound like a fucking alien? Man? He's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've come to Earth in peace. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you see that shit, uh, Slushy? Like, the, I mean, the the alien in in uh, Arizona, or what was it? Where in, uh, in Vegas, bro? That happened on my birthday. No, it didn't. May first. Get the fuck out of here. This year, I'm really interested in in like alien and like UFO type stuff, just because like, I think it's I think the world there's there's too much going on for us to believe that there's only one mm. universe. I feel like that's like, I I, I think it's just crazy. <laughs> I've literally, it's weird. Like the way I've lived my life, I've kind of had everything like, I, I plan 20, 30 steps ahead always, 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 always. Really? Like when I was, you know, I, I remember being, you know, a sophomore, junior in high school and going, I'm going to, I'm going to play ultra. I'm, I'm going to do it. And I, I would be like walking around in PE class, telling all my friends like on, on the bus, I'm gonna be making X amount of money uh, at a show. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> oh shit! And it was just, you know, I like, and and dude, I graduated four fifty five or four ninety five out of five hundred at my high school. I graduated Holy. five from the from the bottom, bro. <laughs> but there was a time where it was like really difficult for me to even like talk to people, mm. and music was like like the first like that, that language. Was, that was your great escape too, right? Yeah. Uh, I was in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. What the um, fuck is that? It's uh, it's like uh, fifteen, uh, like fifteen twenty minutes from Philly, 
like an hour from New kind York, of like near Atlantic City type shit. Or, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, like forty minutes out from like like Ocean City, Atlantic City, that area. So what goes on over there? Ooh, ooh, I mean, a hundred people live in that town. Twenty thousand. <laughs> it's like it's it, it's weird. It's like a pseudo farm town. Like I lived in a townhouse in front of a farm. Really, growing up, like there was like people animals like, and shit like that. animals and shit behind my house, and then it was just like a townhouse. Well, I I, I was very I was very sheltered kind of growing up. Like okay. well, I mean self sheltered. Like I was really into computers. I, sp I spent a lot mm. of my time on the inside. I I didn't really like. You're like me. I was always home. Yeah, just playing video games all all I day. I love home. I love that shit. But I I had my 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 best friend would always tell me. I think his his roommate in in college uh was was addicted to heroin and would steal his his video games every week. So like he would notice like okay, Call of Duty's missing now or he, like you already, he already knew. It was so so that was like that was the only really instance I guess of of that that I it's super random I know it's like a really random fuck, example but man, like what the fuck? I'd be pissed if I woke up and my <laughs> copy of Guitar Hero was missing so I don't know but <laughs> you know heroin man it takes everything from everybody man it's Guitar Hero Guitar Hero <laughs> what the fuck Street man? Fighter Four Tournament Edition like it's it's not it's not cool and you and, and when I met you you didn't look like the way you look now like yeah. you know and so being like, were you always overweight when you were young too? Like, yeah. Did you deal with bullying and all that craziness? So when I was like maybe twelve, like textbook bullying, like little kids like bothering you and shit like that. It was it was that it was it was a mixture of like like a like you know my my dad was never really in the picture so like mm. I started kind of emotionally eating at like twelve or thirteen, and then oh, I wow. my okay. my so I was I was a skinny skinny kid till I was maybe like ten or eleven. So you started so skinny. that's crazy, and I just my bmi got super high i was super stressed but it was with school and everything and mm -hmm. uh you know i just i don't know i i i ended up getting to a point where um you know i was touring i was 325 pounds and i i just really couldn't uh i i couldn't move i couldn't dance i couldn't like jump like like i i grew up you know admiring like skrillex and how like he was able he was to very energetic know, yeah, yeah, yeah. jump on the decks without even like a second thought and mm -hmm. i always wanted that was my dream was to be able to like to do something like that and you know um so i uh ended up getting the uh like the bariatric sleeve oh. my, my bmi was just so dangerously high that i i, I was not going to live a very long life Get otherwise but uh, it's been been about a year going on too and I've, I've kept it off and i've been you know uh yeah. changed my diet completely and you know i i feel i just feel great and i can i i don't feel like uh i had sleep apnea before like I would snore in my sleep and I would I would stop breathing in my sleep. That completely went away. Um, the people that are from high school that I never I never talked to that bullied me. That and like, now they see you now. See you, like, bro, dude. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not gonna name names, but there Do was it. there was this kid. There was a a rival DJ in my holy, high school. Holy, holy, and uh, I was playing ultra one year and oh, and that's a stab right there, bro. So this dude in high school was getting all the girls while I was in my bedroom working on music just doing my thing you know and i played ultra for the first time and i it was it well leg, okay so i'll paint the picture logistically it would have been impossible to get him passes because he texted me an hour before my set <laughs> oh he goes i'm at the gate can you get me in this guy has no shame like like bro <laughs> <laughs> you've you've been to festivals. You know how impossible it is. The, it, it, you might as well forget about it. <laughs> it's it's insane. But it was just like it was a moment of like, oh my god. <laughs> and you're about to go on. Yeah. <laughs> please tell me you texted him back. Fuck you. Like no, please. I just I just didn't respond. Didn't, didn't respond. <laughs> I mean that's the same. Yeah, that's the same. You know. <laughs> well, because I I mean again I I never want to be like outwardly negative yeah, but it's like yeah, it's yeah. like I, i'm just i'm not gonna st like and that's your moment like you should know what the answer is already fuck you yeah well <laughs> <laughs> if, if if you're listening to this and you know who you are yeah, stop, i love you uh, but uh, that was not cool <laughs>you told me you had some some overdose issues like yes let's, let's talk about that uh i overdosed last year uh, and it was last year i thought it was, it was years it ago it was last year damn last... you was turning up so you you're just taking all the success and your wallet yo that's i mean yeah. that's really like some when you get shit so fast you become you feel like you're untouchable right you and then you like... crash and burn and you realize man wow none of these people are here for me at all and i'm alone and mm. It's real, man. Like I, you know, I, 
uh, overdosed and, you know, thank God came back. You know, I, I don't remember much. Somebody, but, somebody was there to help you or I mean to. So I went, I went missing in LA for like a day. Crazy. Do it. Well, so, so I left my phone at home. No way. And, even and I was, I was, I was doing a crap ton of crap ton of shrooms. Mm. You know, uh, which is which is what made me even more worried about designer situation because, like, you know, like again, like shrooms for the brain, or it's you know, mm. I don't know. But um, damn. But I I I came back from it. You know, my my family was there to support me and everything like that. And uh, um, you said that you you actually felt like you went somewhere else. Yeah, I saw like a door. Really? Like a like a black like. It, like I, I I don't know if it was like a like a hallucination from mm. like being that like close to death, but like it was like a doorway. Just a, that's all I remember. It was just a door, like a black like starry kind of doorway. Yeah, a lot of people always say that it could be because we're designed to think there's a door, so it, that's something that your brain kicks in or your mind kicks in because mm. you're in that zone. Or it yeah. could just be like yo. There is a door. But what, mean, what did you OD on? It wasn't shrooms, though, right? Oh no, no, no. it was it was Xanax. I see. Oh, okay. yes. So that's yeah. that's that's. The I number. was also I I you know I was going. Hold on, my shoe is like. Um, I was going through a bunch of like crazy, you know, uh, emotional roller coaster. Emotional back and in. and like just music industry stuff at the same time. Dealing just, with girl shit either. Are you, were you dealing with girl shit? Like, dude, I was, I was, I was super single. Really? Super single. Because yeah. a, a lot of rappers that I know, they always like, you know, like Mac Miller and all, they all went through like women issues and shit. Mm. And then the Xanax come into play and it's. Well, and, and my thing was like, I was just, you know, uh, I, it, it was, it was, it was just a, it was a stack up of a, of a bunch of things. Mm. And it was like, you know, uh, it was one of the you know everybody has those days where the pressure is just like how do you how do you, you stop make or break yeah, you know yeah. wow. so like you know now a year later you know i i went to the hospital i, I was in like 5150 for two weeks i wow. missed myth missed fourth of july so it was it was you know we're coming on like a year anniversary mm. of it now Damn. um but you know i don't think i would be the person i am today if you didn't go through that route like i i needed to you know really realize how how fragile life is you know sometimes i and this is like like even now like like every day this week there's been a time where i've just stopped and gone like okay my heart is still beating i'm mm -hmm. still alive whatever is going on like like it, it cannot be that bad if yeah. if i'm if i'm still here so that's that's something that like after the incident happened like every day i'm just thankful to be here and you know the the, the friends that did call me in the hospital like mm -hmm. like again like my best friend andy um i didn't uh, even notice this was last year yeah well i i, I only really just kind of came out about it uh mm. like recently but it was one of those things where like dude i would i i because 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 you know i hate reaching out to people and, mm. I, and I'm, I'm not i'm not that the, the guy to to reach out when i need help so i tried to soldier it alone and it was uh you know but but now now i i i am i am just a lot more open to just everything now i just feel i feel feel just so much better now so uh there's a song past lives that's that's been out since 2020 i released it for free holy shit and somebody took the song so okay rewind it is a <laughs> remix I sampled uh, a band called Borns. They have a song called Past Lives. I sampled the intro. Mm. And then I made like a lo-fi beat on top of it. And I had made instrumentation on top of it. I uploaded it for free because I sampled it. I obviously couldn't afford to get it cleared. I had to go through Interscope. Yeah. So I uploaded it for free. Somebody took it upon themselves to redistribute my version to Spotify. <laughs> spelled my name wrong. And oh, put their name on it. No. Uh, so I put it out as Sapient Dream, which is my like second like a, like sec my lo-fi project. Yeah. Uh, and they misspelled it. So that wasn't you know I like I, I was just like upset that that now I might potentially be in legal trouble with Interscope over this sample because somebody else. Oh, so yeah, they get your lawyer to fucking so smooth that out. Here's where we figured it out. Bef an hour before my flight to Asia. I re-recorded the vocals myself. No way. So, 
<laughs> I got him sounding exactly like the original Bourne's vocals, and we're swapping the songs. Wow. So I'm getting all the streams for it, all of everything, you know, uh, you know, praying. But uh, it's it's officially coming out. So uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a silver lining to like a four year long, three you know three year long battle with this song. And it's kind of like a, a a weird connection, especially what you went through last year, and then your hit song, your hit number one song is called Past Lives. It's crazy. That's so weird, man. That's like. Past lives. How, how does it feel that you're behind like some of the marshmallow shit you see him like in front of like like behind the collabs yeah, yeah like it's really cool i think that the records that we worked on together like i'll never forget like just being able to work on those songs in the studio and like being able to like like because I, I remember like us having the conversations and like facetiming about like you know what vocal thing are we going to put here mm -hmm. what you know having those like little like the making of like I, I like whenever I hear Twinbo, which is like one of our collabs, wow. I just go like I just think of the like us talking about finishing the song. And the the, the fact that it's been out for for like almost I think six or seven years now, that's just weird to think about. <laughs> but it's cool. I didn't really start DJing. I'm a producer that also just so happens to DJ. Mm. So there's like I think there's that distinction too. And then on the producer side, you know, I just you know I just really do whatever is just like uh, whatever feels right in the moment. I I, I see colors when I produce, wow. so like um, I I see specific songs as specific color. I don't know if that's like a thing, but like if you know certain songs are red, you know certain songs are are like purple or green or blue, depending on like like certain pad sounds. Like I can picture the chords in my head. Um, what? Like I can't read music at all, but that's that's kind of how I always really understood music was like kind of like I can I can almost like see Ableton in my head. So like what whenever I'm away from my laptop and I'm I'm sure like a lot of producers are like this as well, but like like I kind of like formulate it before I even really like my brain will will kind of like go through the processes and if it's a cool idea, I'll just I'll just run downstairs and I'll make it in like 20 30 minutes. Can you create emotions? Like can you control emotions with your shit? Um well so I control my emotions with it. And I would assume that, like, you know, we're all humans. So, so human, like, human connection. So I, I make music based off of, like, you know, if if I want to evoke sadness or I want to evoke, you know, happiness, mm. I'll listen to it. If I feel that way, then I feel I've done my job, you know. But it's, like, that's kind of, like, music, music is, like, therapy for me in a way, in that way. So, like, like, yes, you know, I'm learning to control my emotions and you know it's like it's like positive hypnosis in a way i would say yeah. I, I have my lap I, I could literally make a song right now if i wanted to <laughs> All right. Yo, Yo, explain this uh steve aoki connection is there is there a good history behind it or that was the first time when i first met you was that the first time you interacted with him or you knew him from before uh it was it was i think maybe maybe the second time i met him wow um, really because I, I had opened for him in uh albuquerque um mm -hmm. Uh, with a buddy of mine, okay. I think you might know. Uh, okay, he's another tra trap DJ. But okay. um, basically, uh, I met him there uh, for the first time, and then um, I think the second time when we met, it was when we did the One True Love record, which was like our collab. So even when you first met him, he didn't know about your songs or nothing yet. He didn't debut anything. He knew about your music, yeah, but he didn't debut anything. Yeah, so, it, it was like a, like I opened to kind of it was like a test the water. So I was deal. there turning up with you on stage the first time. Yeah. When we when we all was there turning the fuck up, that was everything like, was the first. That was I I had never. So I was imprinted on you that day. Yeah, it was, it's a rap. That's crazy, yo. You hear this shit, job, man? I was there the fucking. It's all coming together. Yeah, yo, know, the first fucking spark. I felt like a nigga Thanos. But but <laughs> but I but I, I will say, <laughs> our call that we had when I was kind of figuring out my life. Mm -hmm. And and we you know got into the the whole designer record thing mm -hmm. that you changed the course of my life in such a positive way yeah. because I I I like I gained a, a a sense of self respect when it comes to being my own producer and and being my own boss and just we can just do a song and we can just do a video and just go ahead and just do it like and that was the, that blew my mind because like <laughs> again like like I'm very like I'm very by the books so it's yeah. like you know but it's it's cool. I mean, it, it was amazingly random. Like, even you didn't understand what was going on. When no. Bob, when Bob no. Saget walked in, you were like, 
It's like, what? <laughs> Bob Saget mm. meeting Will Smith. Wow. Only two times I was ever just like, like, cause the, the, the air, they have an aura about yeah. them. You know what I mean? It's like, like they bend it like, like, like the matrix. You know yeah. Like, yeah. He bent the fucking. <laughs> yeah. 